Hello again, and it's time for tutorial number two about transducers. So when we left before, we were looking at this uh, filtering and mapping functions here, right? Now, I want to come down real quick and take a look at this code here. Um, the part that actually, we'll call this the reducing function, the function that builds the resulting collection. There's a better way to structure this, but let's look at it this way. Let's say we want to have a new reducing function called uh, string or for a reducing function, right? And um, our reducing function will look something like this. So we'll have a string builder, and we'll need to include that. I believe that's uh, uh, util string build, um, string, or is it lang? There we go. All right. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so we'll pull in the string builder. And so we have string build builder here, and this is our accumulator. And then each time we're, we're going to add a character to that string builder. Right? So our reducing function is pretty easy, right? We just do append here um, and then accumulator ch, right? Okay, that works. And we can declare that. And then we can do uh, reduce and um, rfn and string rf. Here we go. Now we got a problem. Here we need to create an instance of string builder right? And then our data is hello world. So what happens when we run this? Uh, we got to define all of our other, here we go. Okay, so we're going to have to do something else here. Mapping. First thing we're going to do is um, to an int, and then we're going to turn it back. Right, so this is a highly contrived. Okay, so what we're doing is we're incrementing them all by one item in the ASCII, um, and then in the ASCII uh, uh, character sequence, and then we're we're um, uh, filtering out the odd ones. Kind of a dumb approach but but you can see here how we could use this to build a string now there's a problem we get the string builder out so what we really want is something like string at the end there we go that works but you know what that's this is really complex now we have how we append to something here how we construct something here and the final step here the conversion now, if we look at this, we'll notice something interesting, and that is we, we could combine these all into one thing fairly easily, like with a polymorphic, uh, um, uh, like, like the protocol or something, right? Where we could have some like I reducing protocol. But if we look at this, we'll notice that each one of these has a different arity. So, number uh, item number two that was kind of ingenious um, that Rich invented with the transducers is is using the multiple arity of a function to um, have these three steps. So now we can do def and string reducing function. And the zero arity case creates a string builder. The single arity case calls to string. And then the final one is the reducing. And uh, let's see what else we need here. We need the accumulator, which is a character. And then we just do append uh, uh, string builder ch, right? Okay, so now we have everything we need. Now, to my knowledge, reduce is not actually designed to call these functions, but actually transduce is. So there's a new function called transduce that takes a transform, which is our RFN, 
it takes the last thing in the sequence or the um, the reducing function and it takes an input collection. Um, let's see here. And, but we get this wrong number of args passed to this. And why is that? Well, if we go up here and look at mapping and filtering, we realize that they only have this accumulation function. But what's going to happen with transduce is it's going to call RFN of, of string RF, so it'll do this. It's basically the equivalent of doing the following. It's going to do um, f, calling f to get the initial value, right? And then hello world. And then when it gets done with the whole thing, it's going to call f on it again, right? So it uses f in three places. It's the reducing function to create the initializing and the end. So that means all of our mapping stuff needs to handle those, even though they may not actually use them. So if you look in Closure Core, it actually has stuff like this. So all these parts here do is pass the values down the chain, right? So the filtering says, you know what, I don't do anything on initial value. I don't do anything on the finalization. It could. It could do whatever it wanted, actually. Um, and uh, it only wants to do something, though, on these steps. So if we do this again and call all of this, bingo. So uh, there's actually a bug in the older version of Clojure. This would be 170 Alpha 1. There's a bug where it didn't finalize the way it should have. That is fixed in 170 Alpha 2. So make sure you're running at least Alpha 2 or higher. Um, but as you see here, um, it calls all the functions uh, correctly. It does, uh, we pass in the RFN, we give it our string reducing function, and the hello world uh, at the end. So uh, this we're going to actually rename to transform, because that's really what it is. We can specify a transform. We can then specify a... Um, we can then also specify a, um, uh, a, a way to build the final collection and an input sequence. And what's kind of cool about this, too, is that it, it, the different parts are agnostic, right? We could put conj in here instead, and what we get is the actual characters. Um, there's a whole other th sort of things we could do, uh, do with this. Um, there's also a way to give it an, in, uh, an initial collection, which I think is this, right? Right, which in which case says, okay, use conj, but use this as the initial value, which is set, and... Uh, use these as, as the um, as the final ones. So you can do all sorts of stuff with this. Um, one other one we'll do real quick is um, vec uh, for uh, transient. And what we can do here is say transient of a vector. Then this one here, um, when we finalize it, we're just going to do persistent of the accumulator, and then uh, we're in a conj ac val, right? So now we can actually go in here and just do vec, and boom, our entire pipeline chain use tr uses uh, transients now. So that's kind of the big the big deal about. Um, about transducers is that we can specify a pipeline, an operation of things to do. We can also specify um, the how we want to actually um, uh, build the result. And the, the final thing we can do is say here, for instance, with this uh, this input, how we want to iterate over the collection. And we'll talk about that next time. So those are the three the three sections. What you want to do how you want to build the result thing, resulting thing, and how you want to reduce over the initial collection. So we're a third of the way there, and then we got even more um, stuff to talk about after that. So that's the tutorial for today. Thank you so much for watching.